Hi, welcome to Dr. Mix. Today I'm going to reconstruct Blue by FL65 because you guys asked me so many times to do it. We're going to deconstruct it using the amazing Apollo X8P by Universal Audio, the kind sponsors of today's video. Apollo X8P is built upon Universal Audio's 60 years heritage of audio craftsmanship. It has 22 outs and 18 ins with 8 preamps capable of emulating Neve, API, Manly and more at near zero latency thanks to its internal DSP power which runs those beautiful UAD plugins without taxing your CPU. Look how beautiful it looks, but most importantly it sounds awesome! Of course it's Universal Audio! Click on the link in the description to know more about it. And now let's dive into Blue! Song analysis. So here is the original song and the separate tracks that I have found somewhere on the internet. I'm going to play it for you just quickly in case you've been living under a rock for the past 30 years. So clearly this is like a Euro techno trance pop track and the multi-track is really interesting to analyze because it starts with the kick <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's pretty heavy isn't it and then we have a kit track so that was a crash from the 909 I had and this kind of tom thing that comes and then we have the snare drum check it out <laughs> this will take a little while to reconstruct, will it not? And then we have the bass. <laughs> they, they've played it really low. I mean, the low note is really down in the basement, isn't it? But my first take is that this is a sample. Yeah, there is a lot to unpack with this bass line. And then we have backing, which I believe are just pads. You know what, let's just call them pads. Pads. Yeah, what else is there? Oh, we got that. So it's pads and effects, yeah. And then we have synthesizers here. There you go. It would be just a normal sawtooth, except it kind of sounds nasal, like that. It's got to be a combination of filter and um, equalization, I take it. And then there is the piano. Tempted to say it's an M1, but it's not an M1. It sounds more like... A I don't know, maybe the M1 will just do fine. We'll see when we get there. And then we have the vocals. That's a really raw harmonization effect that we get there. So next, we're going to deconstruct the kick drum. So for the kick drum, I've made a little bit of research and found out that one of the members, Gabri Ponte, has posted this TikTok saying the following. The entire beat of the song was made by editing and cutting a loop sample from a sample and scratch vinyl from my collection. Uh, so yeah, uh, this puts me in a position where I cannot just take any LM2 or 909 or whatever, I actually have to match it. So let's listen to it again. It's pretty, it's pretty aggressive, but who knows what went into it. What I tend to do in these cases, I'm just going to open an instrument, an instance of battery, I'm going to call it kick, not lick. <laughs> Samples, drums, kick, and here we go. Eh. Hours later. All right, so for the kick, we had to go in the end through this collection of mine, which I have had for decades, and um, we managed to find this one. 
Polestar's Magnetic. So we went, we went through the entire book of kick drums and eventually he sh showed them these are all kick drums. Yeah, and then we've distilled them to this combination. This is the combination that makes that kick drum. <laughs> Filtered in this way. So he got the, These tiny, are the, <laughs> the tiny little sections for each. So we have now imported them into the session and let's listen to them one by one. Yeah. 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 Yes, because it has a little bit of that hi-hat attack. I don't know if you noticed that. And the result is this. All right. So let's listen to how it sounds in comparison. Oh, just so you know, this is the original and this is me. Just so you know, I'm, I'm going to hit this button here to go back and forth. Original. Us. Original. Us. Well, I think I should change it just a little bit because the original one has a little bit less low end and it has a little bit more mid. Done. Next, snare drum. Now I wish for the snare drum, I knew that it was a drum machine, a specific one, but again, I'm gonna have to look for sounds, samples, drums, snare. It's definitely too much. Uh-huh. That's cool. All right, okay. Original? Me? It's definitely in there. I need more, but it's definitely in there. Huh. Okay. I think I can use this. Definitely. Cool. Let's keep going. It's kind of similar. Yeah, I can definitely fit that into it. This one. It's got to be a combination of this, of this snares. Let's try and play it. <laughs> yeah, I like it. All right. Yeah, quantize. And now let's compare. I gotta tweak the levels of each one of these guys. So this can go definitely down. Maybe this pitches down a little bit. I'll, I'll let you see here, right? So this, this is the original, this is me. Let's keep going. Maybe the entire thing a bit down. I think it's fine, but uh, we need a little bit of that low end. There is like a kick. Well, I, any of this would do, actually. That's it. This guy, this guy, this guy. Yeah, we have that kick. You know what? Let's push all the levels up here. All right. Then we go here. Ooh. This one definitely has to be quieter. All right, let's compare. You know what should be shorter? That's what this should be. Yeah, maybe even this should be shorter. Next, 
hi-hat. So the hi-hat on this thing is pretty straightforward. Oh, it's got that sort of tom sound thingy. Again, who knows where they got this sample? Because those sampling vinyls back then were, you know, you didn't really know what was on it. <laughs> so it's really hard to tell. Let's open a new instance of battery. HH, bang. Oh, this is it. All right. Let's try that one. All right, quantize, make them all loudest. Bang, bang, and let's compare. All right, we have to, we have modified it a little bit. How about if we cut it low? Original. That's pretty cool. You know what we should do actually? I think we should make this notes a little bit shorter. How about that? How about if we go like this to this length? Huh? And then maybe we can delete all of the others. Quantize it and then make them all the same. Even shorter, possibly. Maybe remove this release. Thank you. Maybe just very short. Compare. Well, the length is correct now. Slightly longer, maybe. Cut the low end even more. Slightly quieter. I am pretty happy with that. Let's listen to the three of them, kick, snare, and hi-hat against the original. All right, let's go. <laughs> Uh, maybe I can add a little bit of that on top of it later on. I just want to add that little tom thingy. You know, I'm just gonna go one more battery tom. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, that's perfect. All right. So I think we need to use a little bit of swing on this one. All right, quantize panel, swing, let's try that. Let's see. Ooh, even harder for sure. Wow, super swung. Oh yeah, that's it. That's so it. Let me just turn it down a little bit. All right, let's compare. Original. Me. Yeah, it's so close. I think it's pretty good. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it some finishing touches with the mix. Yes, I'll fix it in the mix. <laughs> oh, I also heard that 909 crash. Let's just get a 909 crash. Drums, samples, 909. There you go. I think this is it, right? Is it not? Oh yeah, maybe just a bit quieter. Maybe it's a bit faster. Yeah, let's record that. <laughs> the drums are done. Next! <coughs> Bass! 
So whilst doing a little bit of pre-production for this episode, I found out that, again, Gabri Ponte very generously let us know that... For the bass sound, we use the Roland S760 sampler. Also, all the pads and string sounds have been taken from those libraries. This was the sampler's video interface. Yeah, looks pretty rough today. Oh, so... What I went on to do is find those samples and I have found them on this repository that was very useful and I thought this is what I was looking for but I do not have a 760 so what do I find? Translator which lets me translate <laughs> the sounds into a different sampler and I went on, got it but it turns out it doesn't really work I would get this error which is very annoying so at this point I thought I really need help, so I asked Louis. So I found through some internet forum, I found this program, A-Wave. You can basically load in the part of the collection we need, which I think was 7082. That's the bass, right? Yeah, so you put that in there, and then uh. you can see it's got all the samples here, and we can actually play through them here. Oh, wow! So we were able to pull all the samples into a contact patch, but... versus... So in the end I have to change my strategy, because this isn't working, is it? Even if we put so much work into it. So let's try a different way. Oh, if you have any solutions, please leave comments here below. Also subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Yes? Yes? Yeah, that's it. So what am I going to do? In the end, I decided to go for this Roland JV1080 emulation plugin, which has pick bass, which is pretty close. Let's listen to it. All right, let's program it. Quantize, Apple D, Apple D, all right, so... Yep. Yep, quantize, then we have... It repeats. Oh, no, here it changes. Yeah. Let's see, there should be the last part. Yes. That's a very audacious line. Yeah, very audacious. By the way, if you want to learn all of the techniques that I use when I reconstruct tracks like this, you can check out Music Producer Gold Guide, my 45 lessons, 11 hours video course where I explain all that I know about music production, including harmony, recording, mixing, and all that beautiful stuff. Check out the link in the description. It's right there. Next, the piano. Now, Blue has a very distinctive piano part, which sounds like this. I'm learning it. I mean, I know it, but I mean, listen to the left hand. And here. Okay, how does it end? Okay, with a long end. Okay, I get it. I have uh, my M1 here. <laughs> Why an M1? Because I wanted to do it with an M1. I think that the original sound is not an M1. Sounds to me like a Roland U110 maybe? 220, one of those. But I don't have access to one. Plus, I really want to use my M1. <laughs> so I'm going to just try and record that part. <laughs>
just copy paste a bunch of times and we're cool. Next, lead synthesizer. So now we are down to the core of it. Here's the original lead synthesizer. Let's listen. Na, 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 na. And instead it goes da 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 da. Oh, interesting. There is a little difference there. This is one of my favorite synthesizer sounds to recreate, and I'm going to use, in fact, Opal because it's just perfect for it. It's basically it's like a they call it morphing synthesizer. And I'll show you why. Right, this is just a normal sawtooth, but check out. <laughs> it's pretty cool, right? So, so I can make it a sawtooth, but if I if I feel in the mood, I can give it a little bit of edge or even more edge. It's cool, right? So, I'm gonna keep it pure, but then I'm going to use the ensemble. The core of it is already there. But wait, because there are a few things that you can do. So, this is cool already, but if I go to the effects section, I can add a bit of compression. Right? So without it, with it, you know, it becomes like, mm. and also there is a little bit of reverb here, right? Oh, it's cool because there is also the action of that compressor. It's pretty cool. Let's take the second oscillator and we're going to give it a... You know what? I would I would double up that same octave and just play with the ensemble. Because they start off going one against the other. Man, maybe a little bit less reverb here. And then we go with the higher octave. Maybe a lot less top end. And maybe more more ensemble. We got a high pass. That's pretty cool. More higher octave now. We're close, we're close. Alright, let's record this. Just one little mistake there, I can correct it easily. Where is it? Where is that sausage? I'm gonna also quantize it all. All right, let's listen to it. I know, I know, I know how to make it better. I know how to make it better. Uh, maybe a little bit less resonance, a lot less resonance. I think that's gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, I can pull it down even more. I think this is it. Original. Mine. Now I'm going to take all of these parts and arrangement into a finished structure. Yeah, that's a bit boring. Let's fast forward this, shall we?
And here we are. This is a lot of work that I've done. Um, let me show you a few of the things that I've added. Um, so I've got this Moog intro bass. See? Sounds pretty good. This is from UAD as well. And then I have added, let's see, this pads. You know the pads that I mentioned earlier? I have finally recorded them. They sound like this. And I've used Opal one more time. Yeah, it's very simple pad sound. Then we have the high strings for which I have used this Poly Max, which is another great, I mean, all of these plugins, you should definitely check them out. I'm gonna leave all the links in the description, don't worry. Yeah? Maybe you could make it a little bit louder. How about that? For now, just for now. Basically, I think that we can pretty much hide the um, original multi-track because right now, we're gonna take care of mixing. So hide these tracks, here we've got the original, and you know, let's, let's see where we stand at the moment. Me. Original. Well, it's getting closer, we're getting there. Slowly but surely. The first thing that I'm noticing is that the kick drum, uh, the original one is a lot brighter. Is it me? I have a blue house with a blue window. Now, actually, not true. I lied. Also, that little Tom. <coughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna turn it down gently. Let's see. Maybe it, it's a tad too bright, so what I'm going to do, I'm gonna just roll it off a little bit. I can barely hear it, but I know it's there, so I guess this is the right level. Let's see about the snare drum. Let's see where we stand there. It, it, it sounds a little bit more where my, uh, my snare sounds a little bit more. Right, so I think I have to kind of work out the levels again. You know, I'm going to do it on the plugin itself. How about that? This is cool. Maybe we can turn this down a little bit. Right. I think this should be quieter. Yeah, a little bit more of that. The whole thing could be slightly quieter. Maybe we can turn this down a little bit. I want to add a reverb 
on the whole thing. And here's how I'm going to do it. Add effects to select a channel. Reverb. Why not use... Ah! Oh. <laughs> Perfect. As the verb. Yeah? I like it. Right. Maybe a bit too long. Right, let's see. Maybe that thumb can go up, back up a little bit, back up a little bit. You see what I'm listening for is just the balance. You know, if you, if you play the original one, versus mine, so, so my hi-hat is going whilst the original sounds like a little bit more like that, doesn't it? Listen for it. All right, let's modify my hi-hat here. Maybe I could add a little bit of a different one. How about uh, if we go samples, drums, I need something that goes, sh sh maybe like a shaker. There you go. That's good enough for me. So then we go to the original part. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, now clearly that's too loud. Got it, got it. Let's see in comparison. doing this you know sometimes you know just a little touch you know rather than looking for it with an equalizer I'm just literally creating that frequency that I need right I'm just jumping from one instrument to the other depending on what I'm hearing and right now what I'm hearing is that um, lead synth that I have been working out is a little bit too dark listen to it And you know, it's got a lot of eh, 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 eh. It's got that sort of uh, resonating frequency. Let's listen to mine for a second. Yeah, all right. How about if I put an equalizer? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's got to be this. You know what? I'm going to pull, pull tech this thing. <laughs> so first, I'm going to make it brighter. UAD man. <laughs> this is a little bit too bright now, but but not by too much. Um, I'm gonna remove this. I've experimented earlier. So this is gonna be a little bit less bright like this. And I am going to use also the uh, mid frequency equalizer. Let's see. Isn't that that we're looking for? Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Let's see. So now maybe we got a little bit too loud. Yeah? I think I need a little bit more reverb to this. So let's add some lovely pure plate. Oh yeah.
I think I nailed it. I think I nailed it. Next one. Let's see. I am going to touch probably the bass because I haven't I haven't really paid attention to it. Do da do. Why am I not hearing that note? Do da do. Huh, interesting. I'm not hearing that note loud enough. I have a strategy. How about if, firstly, I join all of these regions? Because we've been through this. We know that this is correct. First solo, then click. Yes, that is the note I want to come out more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down everything else. Even more. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds pretty much right. I'm going to use... Come on, the LA-2. You've got to do that. Plus, we have it. <laughs> right. So, ooh, look at this. It's beautiful. Okay, we have a little bit of... Right, so we want to uh, 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 put a little bit of that frequency in. And uh, again, why not use... Let's try Hitsville. And Maybe turn down the highs a little bit. So now that I am getting the sound of the bass, I'm realizing that the low end to the kick might be a little bit too weak. But at this point, I think it is important that I start working on uh, the um, master bus, right? Why don't I put a nice compressor there? Um, the API? Why not? <laughs> I just put an API on this mix. Ooh, this looks nice. Full mix. Okay, so then maybe we can go a little bit harder on this one. No, maybe not that hard. Not that hard. No, let's just gently kiss the needle. And a little bit of that. Oh yeah! Oh yes, baby! So maybe I just make it a little bit less hot. How about if we go with a minus 2 dB? Alright! Alright, maybe this space now has become a little bit too big. <laughs> sounding good I like it so um, maybe I could use a little bit of uh, I don't know let's see what so manly lab I want to try this one instead oh yeah oh yeah I think I need a little bit of reverb and a little bit of brightness to that piano. So here I'm going to add a bit of pull tech. I mean, as you know, the pull tech is probably my favorite equalizer. I mean, for announcements, it doesn't get any better than that, in my opinion. I think that's it. And then we just add a little bit of reverb and uh, we call this PNO verb. I'm gonna use the lexicon again. Why not? Bit of pre delay. 
because you know the pre-delay basically allows you to get the reverb out of the way so it doesn't it, it doesn't sound confusing or that it's smudging the sound that that's why i like a little bit of pre re, pre pre delay And you know what? I am also going to add a touch of compression. Oh, wow. Yeah, the Neve 33609. Absolutely. That, that, that's a great piano compressor. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah, that's what we need. This Neve is well transparent, but it also has some kind of uh, beautifying quality to it, which works really well for pianos. And then I wanted to touch on this loop that I have worked out earlier. Yeah, you know what? I am just gonna put this inside of the main groove because I think it sounds really good there. So... How about that, right? And maybe... I think it sounds perfect in there. Check out. And maybe that hi-hat. I'm not convinced about that hi-hat yet. Let me see if I can find drums, samples, open hi-hat. Huh, maybe that? Why not? A little bit of 808, never heard anyone. <laughs> I think this is it. And then I think the entire mix is a little bit more mid than mine. So how about if I go with an interesting EQ like Hitsville Mastering? Why not? All right, left mid. Okay, let's push just the mids. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Yes, just one final touch here. I forgot to put it here. Yeah, like that. Right, well, what can I say? I think we got to that point where we can just play it from the beginning and enjoy my version of Blue. If you like this kind of videos, please let me know. Hit that like. Yes, it doesn't cost you anything and it helps me a lot. I wanted to say thank you to Universal Audio for supporting this channel. I am very honored to use your stuff. It sounds amazing. Guys, I would suggest that you really check out the link in the description for Universal Audio. Give them some love and let's enjoy Blue by Dr. Mix.